Despite the fact that the Protocols of the Elders of Zion was proven to be a forgery in 1920, its influence fueled a rising anti-Semitism in Germany in the years after World War I. Avowed anti-Jewish sentiment became one of the 25 points of the platform of the new National Socialist Democratic Workers' Party, the Nazis, led by Adolf Hitler. When Hitler became Chancellor of Germany in 1933, he began a systematic erosion of the rights of German Jews. Hitler wanted Germany to be Judenfrei, free of Jews, hoping they would decide to leave their homeland after losing their jobs, their businesses, and their citizenship. Nazi Germany quickly revealed itself to be a criminal state whose citizens were kept in line by the state police, the Gestapo, and the elite force known as the Order of the Death's Head, the SS. By 1935, German Jews were declared stateless. In November 1938, their synagogues were torched and destroyed, and it was by now next to impossible for them to emigrate to another country. On September 1, 1939, Nazi Germany invaded Poland, the beginning of World War II. But as the Nazis quickly conquered country after country in Europe, they were challenged by having no policy about what to do with the large populations of ethnic Jews, particularly in Eastern Europe. In the Soviet Union, mobile killing squads followed the German army, rounded up Jews and shot more than a million of them. In other areas, Nazis created ghettos, confined spaces in cities where Jews were relocated. As the war dragged on, the conditions in the ghettos worsened, and it was decided to send some Jews to labor camps. Historians have only recently learned the extent of the Nazi camp system. We now know there were more than 42,500 camps across Europe. In January 1942, Nazi leaders developed a plan to provide what they called the final solution to the Jewish question, the relocation of Europe's remaining Jews from the ghettos to death camps, the most famous of which was Auschwitz-Birkenau in Poland. Jews and others who the Nazis called undesirables, Roma or gypsies, homosexuals, communists and political dissidents, were transported by train to the camps, where they were immediately selected and directed either to the right to work or to the left to their death in gas chambers. By the end of the war, six million Jews, two-thirds of the Jewish population of Europe, had been murdered. Once the camps were liberated by the Allied soldiers, hundreds of thousands of survivors began the long journey to their homes. Many chose not to stay in Europe, however, but to emigrate to the United States, Israel, Australia, the United Kingdom, and other countries. Every one of them has a story. Art Spiegelman tells his father's story in his masterful graphic novel, Mouse. His parents' reluctance to speak of their wartime experiences was a common survivor response. One woman I interviewed, who was 15 when the camps were liberated, said, I didn't want to talk about it. I just wanted to be a normal teenager. She didn't speak of her experience for 40 years, but she lived it every day. When she finally started sharing her story of deportation, a yellow star, a ghetto, a boxcar, Auschwitz, a shaved head, a tattooed arm, endless roll calls, extreme hunger, a labor camp, and a death march. She couldn't stop. But that sharing comes with a cost. Each telling brings on a nightmare and revives the incredible grief and guilt over being the only member of her family to survive. It's difficult to imagine six million victims. Students have tried to visualize that number by gathering six million paper clips, six million grains of rice, or six million buttons. But the historians and curators who build memorials and museums would prefer we look instead at the individuals who lost their lives, or nearly did, to the evil of the Holocaust. Which is why when you go to the Holocaust Museum in Washington, D.C., either in person or online, you are given an ID card of an actual victim or survivor. It's also why Art Spiegelman told Vladek's story with cats and mice in his own effort to understand. When asked why he wrote Mouse, he explained it by saying, I really need to know this. I just need to know it. Survivors today worry that once they're gone, their stories will be forgotten. 
and they have reason to worry as even the youngest child survivors are close to 80 by now. So as long as they are able, they continue to tell those stories with an urgent concern in the hope that what they experienced will happen, as they say, never again.